You're watching How to Cake It, I'm Yolanda, and this week I am making a highly requested cake, which is a strawberry. Yes. Thank you for your help, guys, really. Strawberries can also model. What, Walter? I said it. If you really love fruits with eyeballs, or cakes that look like fruits, please share this video. You know, Walter, I gotta give him credit, he's one of the most shared videos that we have. This is a jumbo prize winning strawberry because I baked 16 pounds of vanilla cake, wow. dyed pink. And yes, I know strawberries are red inside, but I wanted it to pop. I level them and cut the caramelization off the bottom. I also cut each one of my four cakes into two layers. So now I have eight layers of pink cake. Eight layers. <laughs> this is your job. I'm just trying to show you what you should be doing, Jocelyn. <laughs> Thank you. Eight you layers. Something like that. Now, Sir Squeeze has to help me simple syrup all of these layers of cake. Sir Squeeze a Lot is available at howtocakeit.com along with my summertime bundle, which includes a summertime sketchbook for all of your cake goals, a unicorn pen to sketch them out with, and a set of four temporary tattoos. Summertime bundle! <laughs> yes, there is a tattoo of you and I'm not wearing it. What are you looking at? While my simple syrup is soaking in, I'm gonna take this opportunity to make strawberry buttercream. <gasps> to make my strawberry buttercream, I simply washed a bunch of strawberries, cut off the green tops, and then I put them in a food processor and pureed them. And once I had a nice puree, I ran it through a sieve just to try and get out some of the pulp and a few of the seeds. It's actually impossible to get rid of all the seeds. You guys are seedy. You're more seedy than he is. Now that I'm happy with my puree and it's been strained, it's time to add it to some Italian meringue buttercream. I did also add a little bit of pink food coloring just to brighten up the color. No offense. So now, it's time to fill these eight layers of pink cake with my pink strawberry buttercream. I used an offset spatula to fill my cake layers with strawberry buttercream and then stack the next layer on top and repeat. I then used a straight spatula just to clean up any buttercream that had oozed out the sides. And now it's time to chill this cake. Once my buttercream is nice and chilled, I remove my cake from the fridge and then I'm gonna cut one side of the cake off because I wanna create a flat side that will then become the bottom. Now it's time to carve a strawberry, a giant strawberry. So I had a model, your friend was amazing. She was incredible. She was better than Walter. She was also delicious. <laughs> Yo. Sorry, she was gonna go bad. For the body of the strawberry, the first thing I did to my cake was carve a diagonal line. I wish I had carved it a bit steeper, but it all worked out. For the top of the cake, I wanted to round out all around where the stem would grow. And I even used a small serrated knife to cut inside, creating like an indent, sort of like a little valley, shallow valley, where the stem grows and the leaves grow. Then I took that slice of cake that I cut off and I placed it on the end of the strawberry to elongate it. Mm. No strawberry is the same, so you can't really go wrong. You know what I mean? As long as you don't cut it into a square, it's still gonna look like a <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> what is that, Walter? Walter's telling me they do make square watermelons. Yes, I know, Walter. <laughs> Where do they make square watermelons? In Japan. When it's young, they put like a glass box uh, over it. Then as it grows, yeah. it fits into the box. I'm happy with my strawberry, so I'm going to crumb coat it. I made a little more buttercream that was just dyed pink, because I want all pink inside the strawberry, but I don't want the seeds on the outside. I wanted my buttercream for the crumb coat to be smooth, but I still wanted it to be pink. So I dyed a little more buttercream, pink with the same food coloring I used in the strawberry buttercream and crumb coated and chilled my strawberry cake. Once my crumb coat was chilled, I iced the strawberry one more time with that same pink buttercream. I want it just to have a nice smooth surface. I love how consistently through all of this, Walter's just staring at you very angrily. He no is. No matter what you say. 
Watermelons have uh, like an extreme level of anger. I might have to kick a watermelon out of this kitchen. Won't be the first time. I'm going to take the opportunity to make my giant strawberry seeds while my cake is chilling. I took my gum paste, I rolled tubes of gum paste, or cords of gum paste, and then I used a ruler to cut even measurements so that I'd have the same amount. And then I basically just rolled a little ball with my finger on my palm and then pinched the end to make it more of like a strawberry seed shape. And then I made 440 seeds. <laughs> Yo, was that so much fun? Oh my God. <laughs> I had to tell Jeremy to like relax and calm down. He was like, more, more. <laughs> For every seed I made, I lost 10 brain cells. <laughs> my palm was chafed. Do you understand what I'm telling you? <laughs> now that I'm done making a whole bunch of seeds, I'm going to cover this cake. I rolled out red fondant, large enough, and then I picked it up with a French rolling pin, draped it over my jumbo strawberry, and began to smooth it with my hands. All around, tucking underneath, just making it look like a gorgeous jumbo strawberry. When I'm smoothing fondant on a cake that has a very natural shape like this one, I do tend to prefer using my hands. A smoother is great when there's any sort of straight edge, but using a smoother here, I'd run the risk of putting like lines into my fondant because it is so flat. So using my hands here is really helpful. It also helps me tuck the fondant underneath the strawberry as best I can. My strawberry looks great already, but it's a little bit matte. I don't find many matte fruits, do you? I used red food coloring and some clear food grade alcohol, and I painted the entire outside of my strawberry with this red paint just to ripen it up. The next thing I need to do is make all the little indents that hold the seeds. No, I can't just press the seed oh on. Gosh. You literally made the indents? Of course. Jocelyn, <laughs> the seed is embedded. <laughs> Jeremy and I, Every time I make a cake, we find ourselves going down the Google hole. So Jeremy <laughs> Googled about strawberry seeds. Are you ready for this? What? Are you ready for this? The seeds on a strawberry are actually a bunch of ovaries on the outside. Oh my gosh! Like, did you? I never! What does that mean exactly? I don't know! <laughs> I used a ball tool and a veining tool to create these indents. The ball to make the rounder top part of the indent and then the veining tool to make it come to a point at the bottom. And I did use, I made myself a little, not a template, but I cut out a little square of paper because they seem to be in a diamond formation. So it's like seed, 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 seed. So I cut out a little square of paper to help me sort of space. So I would never put them too close or too far from each other. Gosh, and yeah. it, that didn't take any time at all. <laughs> right, Jeremy? Yeah, you just whipped through it. <laughs> it was like whoosh. I want to paint the surface of this cake once again for two reasons. I want to enhance the color one more time and if the surface is wet, it'll be easier to add my seeds. So I just reconstitute the same paint I used before. I don't even know if reconstitute is like appropriate for what you're trying to say. I Jeremy, <laughs> it's reconstitute. <laughs> Hold on, restore something dried, especially food, to its original state by adding water to it. Because the paint had dried up a bit, yeah. I needed to add more liquid okay. and reconstitute it. <laughs> Give her the dirty look. Can you help me out here? He's always looking at me. Look at Jocelyn. There. No, yes. he's still looking at you. <laughs> Once I'm happy with my coat of paint, I'm going to add the seeds to every single indent. Yep. They do all go in one direction, which I admire. That's what I would do, like if I wore, you know, 465 seeds on the outside of my body. I would make sure they were in one direction. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. 
Do you know what this part of the strawberry is called? The leaves? See how the leaves are all one? Yeah. Does it remind you of anything perched on its head? Something we reference on the channel a lot because queens wear them. Oh, a crown! Yeah. Cool! It's a crown. To make the crown, I'm using green gum paste and then I made myself a template that kind of looked like a daisy. Now I need to roll out my green gum paste and lay my paper template on top and then I use a sharp paring knife to cut out that shape. I don't, I don't get it. Like all their seeds are one way but then their leaves aren't the same size. Perfect. I don't think nature, Mother Nature uses a ruler. I really like her, but I don't think she does. The next thing I need to do is insert some wire into each leaf. So I cut lengths of wire and I inserted them from the tip of the leaf just down the body of the leaf. I don't want the wire to reach all the way to the center of the daisy. I just want something that will help me manipulate the sort of, the way the leaf lays on the strawberry once it's on. The next thing I'm going to do is use an impression mat that I have uh, and just create some texture on the leaves. I just don't want them to look flat and cartoony. The next thing I need to do is paint these leaves. So I'm using some dry color dust in green and yellow to give my green gum paste a more realistic natural color. And some texture, really adds to the texture. Then I flip my entire green gum paste daisy over and make that same textured impression on the other side. So I paint one side of it with the green and yellow, then I flip it over and paint the other side with some of my Dutch process cocoa. And the reason I did this is, sorry guys, but often your leaves look like a little bit dirty or bruised, as if people have just been picking you up by leaves, you know? The next thing I need to do is pick this entire gum paste daisy up and affix it to my cake. Oh, first brush the little valley on the top of your strawberry cake with some piping gel then pick up the daisy as quickly as you can and place it in the center. As I went along, I used dabs of piping gel and then I bent each leaf and placed it however I wanted it to look on the strawberry cake. I'm glad it worked out. I was convinced I'd break one. If that wasn't scary enough, I'm gonna repeat that whole process one more time, making another big daisy and place it on my cake. This time trying to aim these eight leaves between the ones I've already placed. So now the strawberry has a nice full crown. The average strawberry I counted the leaves of had 13 or more leaves. Wow. We were shocked. That's a lot. Like if somebody stopped you in the street and said, hey, how many leaves does a strawberry have? You would have not guessed 13. I'd say five. Yeah, no, it's a lot more than five. I never really noticed. I'm so, I just want to say sorry for not noticing you and all your ovaries. Now I find when I buy strawberries, they've always like cut the stem right down to nothing. But I like when you get those strawberries with the stem. Or have you ever done strawberry picking? Anyone? Yes. I have. Yeah. So I wanted to make a stem on my strawberry cake. So what I did is I just used a little more of my green gum paste, rolled it into a cord, and then I took another floral wire, folded it in half and twisted it just for a bit more strength, inserted it into my stem. Very carefully I added a bit of texture using my mat once again, and then I inserted that stem into the top center of the crown. And don't forget, if you like giant fruit cakes, please make sure to share this video. There's a button below. Guys, I really wanted to make the strawberry cake for my new cake book that's coming out that you can pre-order now, but you guys have requested it so much on YouTube that I really felt it belonged here. Besides, Walter wouldn't have it. Yes, Walter's in the book, but there are also 20 new cakes that you have never seen in the book along with Walter. If you wanna pre-order my cake book, I would really appreciate that. There are links below so that you can pre-order in Canada and the US, and we will be updating everyone on how to get it internationally very soon. Walter, they're gonna see you like around the world.